Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another exciting session of Digital Vidya webinars. The topic for today's webinar is Making Money Out of Data, and we have with us Shailendra Kumar, who is the Vice President and Chief Evangelist at SAP. So we have a little poll over here that I'm going to launch. Please let me know your relevant answers for it. Great. Thank you so much. Okay. So we have 33% of the attendees from the data science team, 33% of attendees from IT team, and 33% of attendees from business execution team. So Shailendra, the webinar session is on. Over to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Niharika. Can everyone listen to me? Um, how can I see no, that? No, okay, so everyone is able to listen to me. That's good. Um, so guys, uh, thank you for attending the webinar. Um, uh, and as I see, uh, the reason for this poll was I wanted to understand what is the um, mix of audience so that I don't get either too technical or uh, too high level so I could actually mix and match my my um, conversation as I'm talking through um, So the title of uh, or the topic for today's discussion is making money out of data Which is also the title of my book uh, which is a best-selling book which is available on Amazon and uh, If you guys want to read you can get it there um, So what I will do today is um, But hang on before I even go there let me just give you a bit of introduction about me. Why should you even listen to me? Who am I? You know, so so let me just uh, have a quick chat about who am I? So I am uh, Shalendra, as uh, Niharika mentioned, I am the chief evangelist and vice president for SAP. Um, but um, I only joined SAP a few, um, um, a few years, a couple of years ago. Prior to that, uh, I was the managing director for Accenture uh, analytics for Australia New Zealand. I ran Accenture and Analytics in Australia New Zealand. Before that, I was the uh, Chief Analytics Officer for Woolworths, which is the largest retailer. I did that for around about four years. Prior to that, I also set up analytics for uh, Coles, which is the other larger uh, retailer here in Australia. Uh, so basically, I've spent time at the industry where I actually set up analytics practices. Um, I uh, also am responsible for the two loyalty programs in Australia. Uh, one is called Everyday Rewards and one is called Flybys. So I've, I've been responsible for both of them, setting that up and uh, basically making money out of the data that was collected. Um, and event effectively over the years, I've actually touched upon around about a billion dollars, um, which has uh, been created out of incremental revenue. So um, this is where uh, I come from. So maybe interesting, for you to listen to me. Um, one more thing I should say, because the audience is mostly in India, I was responsible for the startup of uh, SAS Institute in India, which also shows, which says that um, there was no analytics prior to that in India. So I was responsible for the entire, uh, the SAS revolution in 1996-97, and how analytics is today in India. So, so that's why I've got a bit of history in Australia, in Asia, and also in India, as I've set it up all together. Uh, so that is one reason you should listen to me. Um, over the last few years, what I've realized is that everyone, and, uh, and that's between writing the book and um, after I left Accenture, uh, one thing I did was I did a lot of interviews and I found out that anyone who was doing um, um, Excel spreadsheet was calling themselves an analytics person. Uh, anyone who was doing data science stuff are truly calling themselves data data science or analytics persons. So, so there was a lot of confusion in the market. So that is what the book also talks about. But let, let instead of talking about the book, let's go and 
and uh, really talk about analytics as a thing and how it works. Um, so analytics basically, uh, if you look at it at a very high level, provides you the tools so that you can answer some very, very basic business questions. Some of the people who say um, that analytics is um, collecting data, some say it is about uh, manipulation of data and some say it is about uh, utilizing that data. But basically the core theme is that you need your business to get answers to the questions and the basic business questions are understanding well things like understanding demand across the regions things like knowing the price elasticity of a product um and how it is going to impact the sales um one thing is very known in the market and, and that question has been asked so many times if i spend one dollar on marketing um 50 cents work 50 cent doesn't work which 50 cent works um no customer behavior from social media what social media is saying about it and understanding that um understand the use of um network capacity so for example i did a project with um vodafone in australia where i was able to tell them um they were actually ch changing their cell sites which cell site to 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 change first and what would be the impact of that cell site onto their business and so forth and going uh, and also um, know and understand the part and process that are going to fail upfront before they fail because if you know that uh, process is going to fail then you can do something about it um, so this is how analytics in my world uh, comes in um, and, and helps the organizations and to do that and as i said when i was talking to people i found out that everyone was doing analytics so uh, what um, but talking about analytics it's not new uh, it is been talked about since 75 in 1975 when batch reporting started coming to play there was some statistic uh, static reporting which led to ad hoc querying and in 80s it was all about data warehousing 80s and 90s and i remember when i started SAS institute in india uh, usually i used to talk about uh, data warehouses um, the warehouse administrator came into play and so forth um, some of you people would have heard about olap online analytical uh, processing where which led to the slicing and dicing of data a lot and that was the time people were also talking about analytics and they said that that is analytics uh, but to be honest analytics is nothing but answering business questions and that is the most important aspect of it and as analytics has evolved over the years you were changing it from um, doing olap or oltp to um, creating processes to creating alerts to doing predictive and now going forward cognitive which is laying the fund foundation of um, artificial intelligence or uh, machine learning and there is a difference between um, predictive analytics machine learning and uh, and artificial intelligence which i can touch upon if if that's that that's what you want to know but but that's something which is going to be very very important going forward for you guys as well so let's uh, look at um, analytics as a whole as i mentioned to you uh, people who do um, reporting people who do uh, data management data collation people who do predictive are all doing analytics so what i've done is i've divided analytics into four different layers of sophistication um, starting from the managing information where uh, you're collecting data you're creating warehouse you're creating data marts you're creating a single customer view for your <coughs> excuse me for your business to do to manage information so that's the foundation of analytics as you look at uh, the next level of analytics is descriptive analytics where reporting comes into play you know, where slice and dice of data happens uh, both of these sections are usually sitting in the it um, it business uh, it part of the business and descriptive is mostly coded it's because you know what you what answer you're going to get what reports you're going to generate so that is all descriptive so product product segmentation or uh, social media analytics where the answer is uh, is set you have you, you've actually created a pipe and i'll talk about that in a in a bit as well you've created a pipe the data um, variables are set and you know that you're going to get a report out of it so so that is where descriptive analytics comes into play the next level of um, uh, of uh, description or, or the list level of analyst, uh, next level of sophistication of analytics is ad hoc analytics now that's when someone reads a report and says 
well, I know this is happening. Uh, why is this happening? So they will pick up the phone and call their business analyst or someone say, well, can you dip, um, dig deeper and tell me why is that happening? So you, um, th so those business analysts are usually doing what if scenarios, simulation, ad hoc an analysis on questions that business is asking who actually consumed that report. And the higher level of uh, uh, sophistication or the highest level of sophistication is the predictive analytics. So when you look at predictive analytics, what you're doing is you're not only predicting what is going to happen, but you're also finding out the reason behind what is going to happen. So this is where supply chain optimization, trigger based modeling or or um, network, next best offer comes into play where you predict um, things like churn, where you predict that these are the customers who are likely to churn. Uh, not only ch uh, uh, these customers are churning, but the reason why they're churning. So this is these are the four levels of sophistication. I will very quickly tell you something and, and, and do a little poll. Um, what it is that I've created a Twitter poll at the moment. So if you would like to go and tell me uh, what are the um, on that, uh, I've, I've put it on the chat. So if you can just click that and go into the poll and just go and say which level of sophistication are you guys working on whether you're doing data management descriptive ad hoc or predictive um that will be great so so it will give me an idea of you know uh, what, uh, what what am i dealing with so um i will give you a, a a couple of minutes to actually go into the uh onto the poll and um and uh, actually respond to that link and niharika can you see that if you just click on the link you will go to that poll just to check if it is working. Guys, um, were you able to um, go to the poll? Just so I understand where are we, what are we dealing with? Perfect. So um, if you can go and um, respond to the poll, that will be great. So I can uh, it's in front of me so I can know where what are we dealing with in the audience. Okay, while you guys are doing it, I'll just move on from here, just in just conscious of time. Uh, so why are we even doing this? So an important aspect of um, uh, of analytics is to understand the business, why it is happening now, why are we changing the way we're doing business and why is analytics so important at this stage uh, in our lives? And so, so things have been changing over the years. So uh, what has happened is that the business context is changing. Um, there is a lot of uh, volatility in the market. Um, what we've seen is that lots of large organizations are being uh, are closing down. They're losing um, their, uh, their their importance. So, for example, if you look at it in the last, if you look at the top ten uh, companies in the world uh, with the market share at the moment, they're all those top ten companies are usually are mostly the companies which have only um come in in last 10 years so what i call is um a gafa where is google amazon facebook um alphabet or oh, sorry um alibaba these are all organizations which have just been created they've challenged the status quo they 
uh, so the organizations like um, IBM and the ones, the older organizations, um, what they were doing was they were only focusing on PNL, but there was a need to do, to make a change, to make a shift towards um, the, the new area. So business context is changing. The business questions are changing. So what has happened is people who were asking a question around, you know, what is happening? The questions are now, why is it happening? So, so that is what has changed from the business point of view. In fact, there is new wave of growth and new innovation is coming in from technology and data context. Um, so I, I tell this to a lot of people that few months ago, a few years ago, and if I go back to my uh, starting of the career, uh, I used to have a, a 486 with 8 MB of RAM and um, I think 256 MB of hard drive. And I was a very happy man. And today my mobile phone is eight gigs of memory. So basically the technology is changed, is changed significantly. There is the accessibility to technology is there and people are able to get a lot of, um, lot of data and churn it, in, uh, churn it very, very quickly. So that has led to data-driven innovation altogether. <clears throat> so there are, uh, so looking at that change, there are a few other changes that have happened. For example, people are not focusing on next practices. They are now focusing on, uh, they're not focusing on best practice, they're focusing on next ne next practices. Now, why is that? And I remember um, there was uh, there was a gentleman who came to me and he told me, Shelly, I will tell you what is the best, best practice to, to uh, do analytics. And I said, well, hang on. By the time I will achieve that best practice, what is going to happen is uh, we will move on and we will have a new practice. And that is happening because the things are changing so quickly. I will also tell you one more thing and you will be surprised that um, iPad, which we have almost everywhere in our houses and uh, in the offices and everywhere is just nine years old. iPhone itself is only 11 years old. So look at the kind of change that has happened in the world in the last few years. So technology has become so much available and so innovation and the decision process re-engineering is happening um, through that. And people want to automate the outcomes and automation of outcome comes very, very easily with something that is called predictive analytics. And that's the fundamental of automation because it's not only automating the mundane tasks, but also automating the smarts behind it to make an intelligent enterprise, to make the enterprise itself, the processes within the enterprise intelligent. So, so human intervention is getting lesser and lesser. And that's where analytics capability play a major role in an organization. Uh, the importance of predictive, uh, the importance of uh, descriptive and the importance of data management is there. I'll go back to my previous slide and I'll tell you one more thing that has changed. Um, earlier, what they used to do was they used to say you manage the data, you create a data warehouse, you create a data mart, and then you would do some reporting on top of that. Then you do some ad hoc questions and then do you do predictive analytics? So it was always one, two, three, four, which is like starting from the foundation and then going to predictive. What has happened over the years is and what I have been promoting a lot and a lot of projects that I've done are like that where people start from number four. People start from predictive analytics. They look at the outcome that people want to achieve and they start from there. So instead of waiting for five years or six years when the data warehouse is built, they say, let's just take a business outcome, start delivering that using uh, using uh, uh, predictive analytics or uh, descriptive or whatever and whatever. And we'll then figure out what data is required to do that. And so it is four, three, two, one instead of one, two, three, four. So a lot of organizations are taking that agile methodology where they're not only looking at um, getting the data warehouse first, but they want to get the outcome very, very quickly. And that is another change in the market at the moment. Uh, one more thing I would like to tell you about is the high performing organizations are able to realize outcomes better than using analytics. And, and, and that is very, very important. So if you look at uh, organizations that have done well, uh, between the difference between the low performers and the high performers, low performers um, have committed to um, have not committed to analytics. They're just looking at data to insights, whereas the high performers they are looking at outcomes. They are looking at what outcomes I need to achieve, what outcome I need to achieve, and henceforth what insight or what data is required. They manage talent end to end, and they're focusing a lot on advanced analytic techniques. The high performers and um, and that's a huge difference. And I, I was doing analysis on all the top 100 S&P companies, and I saw high-performing companies have got a 
chief analytics officer and i don't think you guys must have heard about the title itself not many companies have chief analytics officer though they have chief data officer the problem is that analytics and data they're two different streams and organizations which have got focus on chief analytics officer or have got chief analytics officer there that is what is driving their performance because an analytics officer chief analytics officer is actually thinking about the outcomes that can be driven and that can be created for the business and that can be given to the business so that is um change a lot and that's improved their financial performance significantly and also help them change the strategic direction that they want to actually um get to um okay so so that's where uh, there is a a bit of a change in the organizational structure and the way organizations are working uh, so that has also changed a lot of things um in terms of so this is a chart which i created uh, based on the fact that um uh, how organizations are structuring themselves initially there was a lot of um, time spent on reporting and data collection um less time on analysis and insights and very very less time on advanced analytics but this is this is now flipped around and this is a moving chart so what happens is um, I, I do keep updating this chart off and on but if you look at it uh, from early 2000s to um, late or early 2020s um, the advanced analytics uh, uh, the, the tip of the iceberg is actually moved significantly whereas people are spending more time in analysis and insights and reporting and data collection is being automated so what they're doing is collection of data is being put in through and they say okay let it let it let it automate let me let us get uh, people to actually automate it themselves so we don't need to um, uh, do anything out of there and because that's that's getting a data uh, get, getting data or getting reports created because that's an it process and that's where a uh, lots of jobs have been uh, questioned as well because when you're automating um, your uh, major chunk of your business the j jobs will be questioned but what has happened is that has increased the number of jobs that are being created in analysis and insights in the business and analysis stream in the uh, advanced analytics space and that is significantly improved and over the period of time as you go this uh, the, the cone the top cone is going to actually increase even further and so there will be dearth of um, uh, statisticians there will be dearth of uh, uh, analytics professionals who do predictive um, prescriptive and also cognitive kind of work so that is where the world is changing so if you are looking for a job and if you're looking uh, to make change to your career then start focusing on statistics and that's very very important that's also the foundation or the fundamental of data science in itself which a lot of people actually miss in there uh, okay so i thought i will also create um, a, a data science um, process this is an end to end process which uh, which is which what i have used to deliver um, a lot of projects i've, I've been i've delivered, pro delivered projects in retail in cpg in telco in financial services um, in um, entertainment but what i found is that this fundamental process if i followed this process was absolutely bang on it worked all the time so one thing first thing first you start with an objective uh, for any data science project or any analytics project uh, usually people start with data how many times have you heard when people say uh, give me the data and i'll tell you uh, what to do with it or, or give me more data um, it's actually a wrong question. The, the first question you should ask is what is the objective? What is the objective of that particular project that you're trying to deliver? So once you know the objective, then you try and figure out what is the data required to actually deliver that project? What are the at a very high level? What are the um, what are the models that you will be uh, algorithms that will be applying on that? You don't need to get them right, but you need to get a idea and that comes from experience once you get that You've got the data collection and preparation done. You do the modeling. Then you bring that back to the business and say to the business that this is the model we've built. This is the accuracy level. This is what we do with it. Um, what do you think? Now, the problem is we usually don't have that business discussion because we're scared. Uh, and we build a model and we go and deliver. But that's, again, a wrong thing because uh, the model is working on past data. The model does not take into account what's going to happen tomorrow because it doesn't have any access to the new data uh, and i'll give you a very classic example i was running a project on market mix modeling where i was trying to get 
um, uh, uh, to solve the problem around if I spend one dollar, fifty cent work, fifty cent work doesn't work. Uh, so how much money do I spend? Uh, and it was for a telco company. What I figured out was when we built the model, model was very accurate. But the problem was we never attributed uh, the launch of the new iPhone, which was going to happen in October um, in, in, in that particular month. And we built a model and we realized that we didn't because that uh, the new iPhone would give a spike and we never uh, catered for that. So when we went to the business and we showed them that this is what we're going to do, they said, well, there'll be Christmas, there'll be um, there'll be a new iPhone coming, there'll be a new Samsung phone coming. Where are the spikes attributed to that? So we actually undermined the project or the model based on the data that we had. But there were new things that were coming that that needed to be incorporated. So that business discussion is very important. Once that business discussion is done, you come back and recalibrate the model. You go back and give some insights and recommendations. And that is also very important because you need to uh, take that statistical model into plain English and explain it to business so that they can execute it. Uh, a very one of my PhDs told me a very good model is a very good model if I if it is not executed it's very good in my uh, in my drawer so um, you need to explain to the business why is that outcome that you're looking at or that output that you're looking at and how can they actually execute it um, so that insights and recommendations come into play and then you do execution a very important aspect of that is once the execution is done you need to actually feed it back you, you do a closed loop exercise to that outcome and start incorporating the data back into the system so that you can excuse me you can recalibrate the model again and again and as the data changes your model is recalibrating and it's working by itself that is also very important so this process which is a linear process uh, and which is designed to work in silos designed to work um, uh, designed to work for uh, consulting companies designed to work for delivering outputs to the onshore teams or it's an offshore onshore model then you use that model this model changes significantly when you're working in-house and uh, you know uh, you're working for a company where you're delivering within the business itself and i will talk about it later if you want to know but but this is the model the linear model which works uh, from objective to outcome and um, uh, for for any business to hand over the results to that organization now uh, in for execution there are challenges um, and the challenges for insights ex execution are usually this uh, if you go to business business will turn around and tell you your analytical model doesn't make sense and I don't think it will work and the reason for that is uh, they don't believe in statistics they don't even know anything about statistics they don't know anything about data they don't know anything about it so they don't believe in it secondly um, they've been doing that business has been doing that for last god knows how many years 10 years five years and so they would say how do you know more about my business when you've not even spent a day in my business how do i trust you that trust thing is missing and from the team's perspective um for example if you're a data management person um you would be told to man manipulate data but not why and that is a big problem because the guys who are manipulating the data have so much of insight so much of knowledge within their business within their work they do that you know that gold is missed out by businesses so it's very important that uh, you know uh, that that business work closely with it and uh, data teams to actually get the insights and get that executed and finally what happens is when an analytics project fail what they do is they don't blame that particular team or that particular manager or that particular in individual they blame analytics as a whole they say analytics doesn't work they don't say that person didn't do a good job they say analytics doesn't work so uh, and analytics is just a jargon and does nothing and you m m must have heard that lots of time and so it's not doing any good to the rest of the um, rest of the uh, world analytics world altogether and so it is very important to make sure that when you do something you do an analytics project you deliver it uh, and get it right out there okay so let's I, I did say on my uh, in my video when I um, release that I will be talking about use cases so let's talk about use cases um, but at a very high level um, analytics um, so this is the uh, business benefit driver tree for analytics um, so if you look at it um, if you start from the business value there are three pillars or, or if you look at a very high level there are two pillars there is PNL there is the profit and the loss so in for income growth 
you would be looking at an outcome like uh, improved customer experience or improved customer retention or uh, customer acquisition or improve, improvement in the sales force or optimizing lead management and so forth. So this is what is giving you more revenue. This is increase, um, getting you more growth for the business. And there are measures to that. There is uh, there is an NPS score that people talk about. There's the complaint, satisfaction, a product per customer, how many uh, customer their product uh, product has been bought by the customers and so forth and behind that you're running different kind of models whether it is a decision tree whether it's a regression whether it is a neural network to actually get those outcomes sorted but it's very important to ask that question to your business what is the outcome you're looking for what is the objective of that project having said that um, you would also look at the, the other aspect of it, as i said there's p and l there is profit and loss so for the loss aspect you're looking at uh, op, uh, op, optimizing the cost or uh, looking at the operation which is which comes from operational efficiencies which is improved staff productivity or improved employee engagement or reduce staff cost automation do a lot of automation do it once and forget it so it works keeps on working uh, reduce operational and administrative costs uh, so these are the two basic pillars where analytics actually helps an organization having said that most of the organizations because they work on these fundamentals are only growing that much they're not growing significantly up so what is the difference between an organize a little organization or a big organization which is doing this to gafas to the top 10 uh, companies in the world well the top 10 companies have realized that they're sitting on golden data they're sitting on data which is gold and so they need to do something with that data to actually create new business streams so it's not only pnl it's also about uh, creating new business models using the data they've got for example if you look at amazon amazon is now launching an amazon bank um, and you would be surprised the business model is very different because the business model is not the bank will not post any money what it will do is it will give you uh, credits to actually launch your products on amazon um, marketplace and having said that uh, after a while, you can actually pay them back based on uh, how much you uh, generate revenue out of it. So there are new different business models that are coming to play at this part, at this point in time, and people are actually working towards um, creating those business models and working on those business models. Um, okay, so I'll give you, I, as I promised, I will give you a couple of examples. So um, look at uh, these two examples. So one will be focused on human resources and one on IT operations. So human resources, um, this was a large retailer in US who actually asked me that they wanted to know the profile of their employee. Now, why did they want that? Because they were hiring people and when they hired people, um, they invested a lot of money in those individuals for a year and many people would leave within the first year. So um, they also said to me that it, it takes them three years for an employee to become profitable to add value to the organization. But what was happening was that they were losing their employee base within a year's time, which was a challenge. So they've hired someone, they paid them 12, 13 months salary, they've trained them, and then that guy leaves and goes and works with someone else. So they wanted to know the profile of the employee and also wanted to know that uh, what um, what is the uh, look and feel of an employee who is going to leave within a, within a year. So what we did was we brought the social media data, internal employee data, performance data, and built a predictive model to uh, and then scored employee, each and every employee uh, for an attrition score. Now what, what that did, we didn't even create an attrition score. Um, an attrition score is very good enough for that particular uh, bit of customers, but not for the new customers. So how did you, so we actually profiled and found out what were the key characteristics of um, any customer, any employee that joins them uh, and leaves within a first year. Uh, and what we found out was that people, and that was, this is between um, us people on the call, that there were people who were actually having a cat would leave within a year. So what that led to was that within their um, um, in interview process, so every insight that you generate, every uh, model that you generate needs to get some action. Um, they started asking the question, do you have a pet? And if you have a pet, do you have a dog or a cat? And if you had a cat, you won't get the job because they knew that most likely you will leave within a year. 
that significantly, just that question significantly dropped the attrition rate by 35% in, in the next year, which was great for that organization. So this is how an organization is now utilizing um, predictive analytics in the sense, not only the, um, the scoring of that individual, but also the characteristic of that individual and how that person is going to be utilizing your um, 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 that actionable insight. The second one was is, is around IT operations. So um, I met this uh, IT company and this company was actually um, had invested around about um, I think uh, it was eight nine million dollars on uh, uh, on Microsoft um, uh, reports that they created they created around about five hundred and uh, 50 or odd reports and um, they called me and they said well we've got this problem uh, we've got these reports which uh, we got a very good requirement document and we were very uh, excited and we wanted those done now they're delivered and everyone is but no one is using it so I said yeah that's a good point so what we did was we actually took that uh, we said we'll do something about it so we looked at all the reports we got all the data from the reports we got the data the underlying data we also got the um, utilization data of the reports um, and created um, to understand to be, um, understood what was important to the business and what was not and at that point in time we created an early warning system we said well what we'll do is we'll create three or four dashboards for the board that board will get whereas whatever else we think second level importance or the third level importance what we'll do is we will then create a model uh, an early warning system and you will get an alert and then you can go and figure it out whether that is that needs to be solved or not so basically um, the, the 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 board was focusing on delivering value not on the um, you know the software or, or or the reports that they were spending most of the time on so that is another uh, uh, success story that we've seen and we've reduced with that we reduced the number of reports from 550 to um, only 10 dashboards overall and rest was all uh, converted into an early warning system okay so having said those or giving those um, use cases um, let me tell you what is the important characteristic of a, of a successful analytics environment now um, this is a changing uh, graph this is this keeps on changing with time um, and at the moment this is where it stands so at the moment, what you need is um, um, live and connected information. Why I say that is because of the social media, the data is changing so quickly that you need to be live. You need to be getting information fed in immediately. It needs to be real time and updating in real time as well. Um, the other thing which I always uh, say to people is, um, is about storytelling. Um, we, when we sit on, as in humans, when we sit and have lunches or dinners, we don't talk about numbers. What we talk about is stories. We talk about our personal stories. We'll talk about what's happening in your life and so forth. So those numbers don't relate to me. Tell me a story. So the, the, the visuals should be so powerful that you should be able to tell a story with that. It should have the predictive component within the environment so it can predict in real time. It should be collaborative. Once I've, once I've created something, I should be able to share it with the business so that business can execute it. So that collaboration needs to come around. And also when I uh, when I actually write a particular report or uh, an analysis and I send it to business and business may turn around and say, yeah, that was done deliberately. We did that because um, we wanted to drop the, uh, we, we dropped the price because um, because we got a discount or something like that. So So collaboration is important and it needs to be integrated with the entire process. It should work hand in hand. And that is the key importance of our analytics environment that uh, that that currently stands and that is successful at the moment this chart will change as we get new capabilities coming in going forward okay um the other thing that is important is uh, and um, what i've seen happening in the world is that people do craft analytics which means that they will get one off exercise and they will throw one problem and then they will get a consulting company or someone to actually build a model and then um, you know forget about it it's a one-time exercise but the problem with that craft modeling is that it is one time it's uh, the, the investment is higher and the moment there is a change in the um, um, in, in the data 
uh, if the customer behavior changes, you need to call the same consulting company to actually recalibrate the model, which means that uh, the cost of getting that model working will be quite high. Um, say you, the, the time to implementation every time will be the same. So you will, um, if you spend three months to build it once to refresh and uh, or recalibrate, you will take another three months. Uh, it's labor intensive and you know um, it's safe for um, reuse or lost, right? So, so it's like if you do it once and that forget it. Uh, whereas on the what needs to be done is it needs to be industrialized. It needs to be embedded within the business projects. It needs to be um, ongoing process performance. It should be a closed loop. It should keep on uh, updating the model. It should keep on updating based on the changes in the data. It's a one time exercise. It's a lower cost as well. It's fast and instantaneous. And that is where industrialization of analytics is very, very important. And a lot of organizations at the moment are getting towards industrialization of analytics where um, the, the smarts and the um, uh, the analytical capability or which then comes to machine learning is being now built inside processes. So all the processes that you're running will become smarter as you go forward. So um, this is one of my pet slides because um, what happens is that uh, or what happened was when I presented at Gartner last year, they actually took this slide and made this their um, um, their uh, closing uh, keynote. Uh, so the critical success factor uh, is not if, if you go to Microsoft, they will say start from the start because you used to see a start button in the corner on the left hand bottom corner. Uh, I say start from the end. Start from the question that you're looking at. St identify the problem first. Define the outcome and the execution. If there is no execution, don't do the project. If you can't define the outcome, don't do the project. You're just spending money for nothing and quantify the value is the value enough to actually deliver uh, to, to to spend that much of money is the is the pnl or the cost benefit of that particular project is enough you may land up spending 2 million dollars and getting 2.5 million dollars that's that may be good for one part of the business but may not be important may not be interesting maybe too much of effort so you need to identify the uh, opportunity, you need to define the outcome and then quantify the value. And that is very, very important. So start from the end, start from the outcome, start, ask the outcome that you're trying to achieve. What I'll also do is I'll show a video which um, basically is what we are doing um, in China. And I will also take questions after this, but um, let me just see how this video will work. Um, Niharika, I'm going to play the video. Um, how do you uh, take the audio from my uh, mic to the video? Audio here, yes. So, headphone. Can you guys hear the video?
Okay, so let me explain that. Um, can you guys hear me? Um, yeah, okay. So what I'll, uh, let, let me explain that. So what, what we're doing is we're getting data from all the traffic lights and all the events at the same time and bringing it into uh, one place and where we're actually improving um, the traffic flow. So for example, if there is an event, if there is a, a cricket match, for instance, uh, at one of the stadiums, then the traffic is, um, is moved in that fashion because we know that there are a lot of people going towards, um, uh, towards that part of the um, city. So they will, uh, they will actually realign the traffic lights towards that area. And similarly, when the match finishes, they would know where people are going to go, which part of the, uh, where, the where they came from and where they're going to go. So the congestion in the business, in, in the city of Nanjing, this is in China, and I've seen that with my eyes, is so smooth that you will never, you will have very less um, traffic jams in there. And that is what is um, driving that um, discussion for um, that particular thing. Okay, so uh, another important thing that they're doing is they're encouraging people to take public transport and um, they're using gamification to do that. They're giving credits for people to actually utilizing buses instead of going through their own cars and they've got bicycles as they go in and, and, and they're giving them credits to actually use public transport. So this is, a, uh, this is a way where they've improved the public transport system using, utilizing analytics, machine learning at the back of that. Okay, so that's the end of my conversation. Um, and um, yep, um, I think we've got a huge opportunity to uh, make a change in the organization in the way we do uh, business going forward. And um, most of the people around the world are uh, looking forward towards analytics to make a huge difference um, and, uh, in the coming days. Um, Neharika, we should be opening for questions. Yeah, thank you so much, Shen Andrew. It was indeed an exciting session. Now, this is for the attendees. Please ask your sessions questions. By the time you put in your question, I'll launch a poll uh, where you can show your interest in our data science specialization training. The first question is from Ramesh Roy. He wants to uh, understand the video context again, as it was not clear to him. Okay. Uh, hi, Ramesh. This is Shalendra. Uh, let me explain. Um, so, uh, from that video, that is happening in Nanjing, which is a city in China. Uh, what they're doing is they're getting data, the uh, data coming in from the traffic lights, and I did explain that a bit. Uh, data from the traffic lights, data from events happening in the city, the city data. They're having, um, they're collecting uh, information from people on the app and they're getting their personal information uh, with their interests and so forth. Uh, so they're aligning all of that and making sure that the traffic lights in the city on daily basis are aligned based on the traffic flow and the way the traffic is flowing towards uh, any part of the city. A classic example is if there is an event, for example, there's a cricket match in um, in the city, uh, which is happening in a stadium, uh, they would actually realign the traffic lights to have a flow towards the stadium, which means that um, th that there will be no congestion towards the stadium. 
and um, you know there'll be more and that happens to be honest that happens in my city here in Australia in Sydney as well because in the mornings when I go to work um, we all know that we're going towards one part of the uh, city the traffic lights are uh, longer but the, the traffic lights are shorter whereas the red lights are shorter and the green lights are longer whereas during the day it becomes normal and it works out so that's all automated and works at the background and it uh, and we uh, for for nanjing use case we also provide uh, a, a clear understanding of how many people in what part of the city are and and so forth at any given point in time people uh, are able to see that and then to uh, to encourage people to go in and um, utilize public transport what they're doing is they do, they're using gamification where they're giving credits or points to people to actually uh, allow them to use public transport and use less of uh, their own uh, private uh, cars and stuff. Any other question? Oh, Sharendra, we're actually done with the questions. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, Sharendra, for leading the webinar session for us. It was great having you here and thank you everyone for being such a wonderful audience. Lastly, I would like to launch out a poll for you to share your experience for Digital Vidya and for today's session. Thank In you guys. If you any part of the session or you join late, don't worry, we'll be sharing the recording of the video with you over an email by tomorrow or most probably Friday. Once again, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Sherindra. Thank you. Bye.